Fernandes Lembo live on the grid, Facebook Live. John, yeah. it's good to see you're back off to the Sabres. I understand yeah. last week you pulled a muscle. I think we should call Guinness. I don't know of anybody <laughs> who's pulled a muscle lifting a hamburger, but you managed <laughs> to do it. No, but what, 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 uh, what, I think what, it was, what the heck I happened? think it was an old uh, back injury. Was it? What happened? I don't know. I, well, actually, from lifting actual real weights. Right. And then I, uh, <laughs> and then I don't know what. I must have aggravated it somehow, and it was bad. I couldn't, I couldn't walk for a couple of days. Yeah, to talk about the pain, because I've, I've hurt my back. People have pulled muscles. Uh, how did Debilitating was this? It is. I mean, you know, right. I couldn't walk. If I, I literally had to seriously clutch the walls to right. walk, and it was it was bad. Right. I went to a chiropractor, got a little fixed up, and now right. I'm about ninety five percent back. So ninety five percent back. Good to be back. So you're probable for tonight's Sarasota East Lake game? No, I'm definite. You're definite. I'm but, definite. Before we get to that, let's talk about uh, touting the paper and touting sure. our all. We have the all area team coming out. Sunday. Sunday, all the spring all area athletes, yep. Right. And we also have coming up next week, we've been touting this every week, yep. uh, people, the uh, HT uh, banquet. Best of HT Best preps. Best of HT preps, honoring all the all area athletes yeah. in the area. And the coaches. Have you got your new suit pressed, or have you got your old suit pressed? I'm all ready to go, yeah. It's a Tuesday night at Robarts Arena. Right. Uh, of course, Derek Brooks, a special guest. All right. Uh, we'll be honoring all the great student athletes and coaches for mm -hmm. the, uh, the entire school year, so fall, winter, and spring. I got to talk to Derek Brooks a couple of days ago. I'll be writing a story for Sunday's paper, and I used to cover the Bucks when he right. played, and I said, do you remember blowing off me for an interview back in 1995? He didn't remember me. I said, do you remember me? I was a tall guy in back who looked like he played football. He says, no, man, maybe by face I'll recognize you. So maybe by well, Tuesday least he was honest. recognize At least the, he was honest about that. The guy was in his face yeah. for eight straight years covering that team, but that's Tuesday. That's Tuesday night, and uh, if uh, bestofhtpreps.com, I mean, hgpreps.com backslash best, all the information you need on there, so... This is kind of wrapping up the school year here. This is the last big burst. This is pretty much it. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, the most we can have playing next week is two baseball teams. Right. I mean, football wraps up uh, Thursday and Friday. And then uh, tonight, of course, I'm in the Bay and Sarasota play mm -hmm. regional semifinal baseball right. games. So, yeah, I mean, we have two teams left. And. You know, we'll see who's standing after next week. You know, I covered Sarasota once. This will be your first time watching them against East Lake. We also have Lemon Bay against Lake Placid. Right, like then that, they've, they've had a crazy run, too. Crazy run, Bay. too. We'll talk about that. I, I covered Sarasota and uh, uh, their last game. Mm -hmm. And basically, they are what they are. I mean, they they got to get good defense. they got to get timely hitting to right. win. It's almost like the little engine that could. Yeah. Uh, is that what you're looking for? I know you haven't seen them yet. Is that what you're looking for tonight? Yeah, game, and East really? Lake, you know, I mean, East Lake has a kid. He was in the start last night, Churchill, who's a right. Florida commit. I'm sure he'll, he'll start tonight. Last last night they played about two, two thirds of the first inning, and then the rain came. Uh, curious to see Clyde Metcalf. Wasn't sure if it's going to be a, a brand new start mm -hmm. to the game, or whether it would be where they left off for two outs, bases loaded, at the top of the first. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean you're not going to score a ton of runs against East Lake. They can always pitch. Seems every year East Lake can pitch. Mm -hmm. That's been their mo. They can always throw two or three guys at you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Is that you know, the hamburger coming back up? No, no. It, was, it was some fruit. So you're, what's like you with hamburgers? So you're not going to score a ton of runs off them. So yeah, you got to do the little things. You got to kind of keep them at bay, and uh, should be a good game. Uh, you mentioned uh, Lemon Bay Lake Placid. These poor, the poor Lemon Bay, they can't play a game. Every time they try to play a game, something but a, happens. A nice season down there. And, definitely, but uh, a, a crazy season. Mm. Yeah, I mean, their their first district game got was Dunbar forfeited. Mm. Then they win the district over Lake Placid, and then of course the whole. Bayshore snafu with the pitch count, and they had a forfeit, so they got a buy in the first round of regional. And then last night they're going to play, and the game gets rained out, so that they haven't played a game in about I think almost two weeks, maybe. Wow. Lemon Bay. Baseball. Hopefully, they don't lose that edge over a two-week period of not playing. Well, I think it's more of a concern if it's a major league team where you play every single day. Mm -hmm. But high school baseball, the schedule is so crazy. You have like two or three games one week, one game the next week. I think they'll be all right. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I like to see the local teams advance. We're in the regional semis here. Yeah. Win tonight. Regional finals. On they're they're on no pushovers at, at this point. In no, the no, season. no. And hey, I mean, you're on the cusp now. You win mm -hmm. tonight. It's a regional final. And then hey, you're two wins away from going to uh, Fort Myers to the state final four. You know, if all our fans out there thought we'd go a week without mentioning football of you know, some sort, we have the spring games coming up yeah. Thursday and Friday. I'll be at IMG Academy. You know, I've been to every high school a million times this area. I've never been to IMG Academy to cover a game. You've been there. I've been there for uh, track and field events. It's quite an experience. Game. Right, just the press box, the whole the whole setting up there. Yeah, it's nice. You yeah. know, the field. I mean, the the the, the field's in immaculate shape. Um, I kind of like it. the scoreboard. It's kind of like there's like nothing, literally nothing behind it. Right. So right. you look at the scoreboard, and all you see is like and it'll be a nice time of the night tomorrow mm -hmm. night too. So, um, yeah. But also spring football. St. Stephen's played last week. They right. won. They won. Beat six A Dixie Holland. So a big win for the Falcons, who of course won the Sunshine State Conference last season. So a huge, uh, you know, for them to beat a six A school that says something for St. Stephen's. Mm -hmm. so definitely good for them. But yeah. A lot of spring football tonight and tomorrow, Thursday night and Friday night.
mentioned IMG, and there was nothing behind the scoreboard. A couple of years ago, there was nothing there, period. Right. It's amazing. <laughs> I took a tour of that place when they were building that stadium, yeah. and they just have land that they can just keep on expanding that empire yeah. into a uh, bigger empire. And I can say, too, but you get there, and to walk to the stadium, you go past the huge uh, field house, you right. go past the academic center. So it's, it's the facilities there are pretty good, obviously. You know, a lot of people out there think that when I ask you these questions that uh, we haven't prepared in advance, and you have these pat we answers. Have nothing prepared. Uh, and sometimes it shows. Uh, but <laughs> but let me let me throw this question at you. It's spring okay. football. It's two or three m- months before uh, the start of the school year. What can coaches or fans of their team glean? What should they be looking for? What should they be hoping to see at these spring games? You think? Well, you know, I, I think you're looking. I, I see. I don't think coaches look at their veterans a whole lot. Like for St. Stephen's, for example, they know what a Fred Billy can do. Mm. You know, um, but I think it's a lot along the lines of the younger guys, maybe who've not played under the lights mm-hmm. of a varsity game, uh, maybe some competitions, some some battles. I think what you want to see is kind of, I think if you're a fan, you want to see clean football. Like, you don't want to see a lot of mistakes because, like, if you see mistakes and sloppy play, what have you been doing the last three mm-hmm. weeks? So I think you're looking for that. And, you know, a competitive edge. And, mm-hmm. and if you're a fan, you want to see your team play well and win, even though it's, a, it's an exhibition mm-hmm. game. But, yeah, I mean, I'll be at uh, um, Mooney. Right. On Thursday, they play Avon Park. And then Friday, I go to Braden River. They play St. Pete Lakewood. Wow. you got a double dip there. Thursday and Friday. Right, exactly. No problem. Yeah, when it comes to spring football, just my two cents is I think if yeah, if you're a, a returning uh, junior, senior, a veteran right. at the high school level, yeah. yeah, your coach is looking for you to have retained what you learned last year. Right. Spring. And if you're a new guy out for the team, I think the coach wants to see whether you're starting to grasp yeah. the offensive or defensive principles. And I think the good thing about spring football, too, is if a kid comes out and he doesn't like it, Right. And he leaves. It's not as traumatic as if he comes out in the summer and right. a week for the season he quits. I think it's a good launching pad, a good kind of almost like an audition for mm-hmm. if you want to give football a try, go out for the spring. It's 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 a few weeks. You play a game, and if you don't like it, you know, leave the summer alone. Exactly. Now, if you're not tough enough, give your coach enough time and tell him you're not tough enough, and give him enough time to find a replacement, a guy right. who is tough enough. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say. Well, I did. I know <laughs> you, you would, you but sure I did. did. <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> hey, there's some some coaching, a new coaching hire in the yeah. area. Uh, Miles Mayer, the new baseball coach at North Pole, we should mm-hmm. mention that. Yeah. Uh, Stacia Hill, the new girls uh, hoop coach at R- Riverview, uh, played under B.J. Ivey there, mm-hmm. was an assistant under Kyle Williams, Williams who stepped yeah. down. But kind of a, a local name that people know about, uh, Nikki Halbert, took over the Riverview volleyball program. Uh, I covered her dad, Gary, when he was uh, Sarasota and Riverview coaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, Webb Halbert, her grandfather, he played, I guess she played under Brian Wheatley at Venice. Yeah. She knows her stuff, I guess. Yeah, and you see quite a few of, of uh, Brian Wheatley's um, alum kids are, are mm-hmm. becoming coaches, which I think is a testament to him and his program. But, yeah, I mean, definitely a, a, a good pickup for them. Obviously, she played under a great program right. with Coach Wheatley. And Riverview, of course, had some great years uh, the last couple seasons. So, yeah, you know, definitely a, a good way to keep the program going. She's local. Like you said, she knows the area. The area knows her. So, sounds like some good hires there for Riverview and Northport. You no, know, yeah, Craig Wolf was the coach, and, and he was there for three or four years. Really yeah. developed a nice program, a great job. leaving her with uh, some t- some tools and talent going Yeah, forward. and it's funny, it's, you know, watching them play last year, they didn't have one or two star players. They were pretty mm-hmm. good all over the court. Um, they got some good young players coming back, too. So she inherits a pretty nice team out there, mm-hmm. Riverview. Well, what else? Well, I mean, I think we've touched about every sport that we have going on now. A- anything that we should be looking forward to? Oh, I, I spoke to... <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're doing a story going forward and on Antonio Blakeney, right. uh, Calvin Mooney fans, maybe he played at Mooney, and then transferred he to, up to Oak Ridge, right. and spent the last two years at LSU, had a nice three-minute phone interview with him, and for two and a half of those minutes, he wanted to be doing something else, so <laughs> we'll look forward to that. Didn't that, go very well. That yeah. action-packed, uh, I'll put it this way, the first question I asked him is like, I'm like, why are you up there? I mean, are you up there for this? Uh, Wait, where is he? Well, he's up at IMG, okay, let's at the Performance context. Center, okay. uh, the draft is coming up, this okay. is sort of an NBA combine. I right. wasn't that familiar with the NBA, and the first thing he says was, uh, sir, I thought you wanted to talk to me about my career at LSU. So I've, I've been doing this long enough where I could tell that the interview was off to an inauspicious start, right. and it went downhill from there. So look for that action-packed story. <laughs> look in for the that Herald story. I mean, you, you, the way you talked it up, who wouldn't want to read that? It'll be a brief. You'll be able to read it in 10 <laughs> seconds. Well, anything else before we uh, sign off? No. I mean, obviously, like I said, next week our banquet. Um, uh, maybe perhaps Manatee Ames' new coach next week. Yes, yes. Talk um, about, yeah, talk about the – we didn't talk about that, but we, we've talked about the coaching search for Manatee. Anything further that you can well, add Well, I, I think just from what I've heard, um, they're going to wait till next week to right. either make a decision or announce it because they have the spring game on Friday. Right. And 
Manatees graduations on Saturday, so right. they don't want to kind of detract from those things. And, and I think they're kind of waiting for spring football to be over. And once it's mm-hmm. over, then kind of move forward and, and, and kind of come to a decision. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they name. Get the spring game over, get graduation over, then really address the important issue, getting a football <laughs> coach up there. Right. Well, no, it's also, it's also, too, it's like graduation and spring football, then you can kind of start clean on Monday. It's, right. it's like a brand new season. So, so when you join us next week, hopefully you'll join us next week. You may know the identity of Manti football we may. coach next we week. We may have one as a guest. Who knows? Yes, and we'll be here to talking about the banquet next week, so yeah. recapping that yeah. and all good things. And again, HG Preps uh, backslash best for all information on the banquet. Remember that. So for John Lebo and Doug Fernandes, we'll see you next week on On the Grid.